Hi golfers, Rob Cheney here from Golf Tech Singapore. Today's video, we're gonna dive into the world of putting. We're gonna use the hack motion wrist sensor here to take a closer look at what really happens down at the wrist level during the putting stroke. We're gonna help you straighten out that wobbly backstroke and help you hold more putts. Okay, we're set up here on the putting green at Golf Tech and I've got the hack motion wrist sensor on my lead wrist. I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the common errors I see when it comes to putting and some things that you might consider doing to help improve your stroke. I think we should start out by saying that the wrists are involved in putting. As much as some of you might want to be taking the wrists out and coming up with different um, ways in which we might think you can do that. The reality is the wrists are moving in multiple degrees of freedom and some of that's actually useful. Um, having a little bit of movement within your wrist when you putt can really uh, help. So just gonna highlight some things that you're maybe not aware of to start with and then give you some suggestions as to what you could be doing to really help improve your putting stroke. So let's just start by clarifying and classifying the movements of the wrists within putting. So flexion extension would be the flipping movement, if you like, of the wrists moving backwards and forwards like, like this. Um, that would tend to have more of an effect on the loft. So it would take loft away if I did this, and I would increase loft if I moved my wrists in this way. In terms of face angle, it has a small uh, effect on that, but, but less so. Face angle is more influenced by the rotation of the putter face about the shaft, so the rotation of the grip or the twisting of the wrists, which changes the face angle quite significantly. And then another movement that you may not give up too much consideration to when it comes to putting, but it's the up and down movement of the wrists. This is called ulnar deviation and radial deviation. We've spoken about this in full swing. With putting, it's a very different task. We're not trying to create as much power as possible. And so how you hold the putter and how you grip it and how you position your hands, whether that be conventional, left hand low, some claw um, variations, there's multiple, multiple ways to do it. But the goal here has to be to stabilize the wrists and stop them from having unnecessary and, and disruptive degrees of freedom. So before this video gets too complicated, I'm gonna focus on one idea today that I think will help to smooth out your stroke and help you to be more consistent. I'm talking specifically about the up and down movement of the wrists here. Okay, so moving your wrists, I want you to do this actually as you watch this video. If you're, as long as you're not driving the car, you can probably try and give this a go. Take your wrists and hold them out in front of you and have them in what I would consider to be a fairly neutral condition, okay? So they're not, the wrists or the fingers are not pointing downwards towards the ground too much like this and they're not pointing up. Let's just try and get our forearm and our fingers straight out in front of us like this. And as you do that, I want you to try and flex and extend your wrist backwards and forwards. And what you'll probably notice there is that you have a pretty free and, and, and large range of motion. And then what I want you to do from the same position is to take your fingers and point them down towards the ground as much as you can. That would be moving the wrist into ulnar deviation. Once you've got your wrist down here in this condition, I want you to then try and move your wrist backwards and forwards in this flexion extension movement. And it's actually, you'll notice there's far less range of motion. In fact, the only way I can really start to move my wrists is by starting to really rotate my forearms as well. So I'm bringing in a, an additional movement. What this is effectively doing is helping to reduce the degrees of freedom and give you a bit more stability. So I'm gonna to talk to you about how holding your putter and using this concept within your grip can really help improve your stroke. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna hold the putter out in front of you and from a down the line perspective here, I want you to try and get the shaft of the putter and the forearms more or less on the same plane or the same line. Okay, and in order for me to do that, I'm bringing my elbows in and tucking them against my torso. So I haven't got my arms out straight. It's important you recognize that there's some flex in the elbow. So the shaft of the putter is out in front of me, arms flexed, elbows flexed and tucked in, um, and I've got this putter more or less parallel to the ground, okay? And from this condition, as I stand upright, I'm gonna bend forward, keeping my arms and my elbows touching me, my side, 
and continuing to bend forward towards the ground or towards the ball and, until I reach the ground. Now, the first couple of times you do this, you might find that you stood in the wrong place and you're too far away from the ball or too close. You can make some small adjustments, but the, the purpose here of this exercise is to get your torso forward and over the ball like this rather than standing up too straight. And as you do that, your arms are going to, as I say, be flexed and tucked in against your side. I often refer to this as the T-Rex drill because, you know, those, the T-Rex had those tiny little arms, right, that pulled in to the side. So you might find that you feel like that, that your arms are really short and tucked in. That's a good thing. So my T-Rex drill bending forward, keeping the arms and flexed. What it does, places my wrist into this ulnar deviation. So my fingers are pointing much more down towards the ground and the top of this wrist is, is stretched out as I, as I move my hands and my wrists into this ulnar deviation. So from here, whether I choose to grip it conventional, as I say, left hand low, or some form of variation on any of those grips, I'm gonna hit some putts and we're gonna take a look at how that ulnar deviation and keeping the hands, effectively keeping the hands much, much higher at setup can really help to stabilize the wrist pattern. That was nice. Very stable, good looking stroke. We'll take a look at some of the data in a second. Keep the wrist up. And I feel like I keep this uncocked feeling. If you were to take your wrists, um, point your fingers down to the ground, as I'm moving back and forth here, I'm really trying to keep this wrist just in that same condition. It's moving a little bit, but it, in essence, I'm just keeping it much more stable and repeatable. So one more time, T-Rex, bend forward, elbows flexed and touching my side, wrists on a deviation or uncocked. This handle is high. I've got the handle raised up. So if we just take a data for just a second on the screen, that blue line that you see running through the center of the screen there, okay, that blue line is representative of that on the deviation. And effectively, the straighter that line is, the more stable my wrist is staying. So from a ulnar deviation point of view, that's much more stable. You can see there's a little bit of a, a wobble uh, in the graph with flexion extension, but I'm managing that quite nicely in the sense that it's quite a similar amount of flexion extension at setup as it is in impact. And that's important as well to note because as I said already, no one's keeping the wrists, no one's keeping the wrists absolutely still. Okay, that's not the way the putting stroke works. And some degree of flexion and extension, some degree of flexion and extension throughout the stroke, which is this movement, some, some softness in the wrist back and through, is actually, actually a power source that you can make use of. So you shouldn't try and eliminate all wrist movement. Some of that power you get from the stroke comes from a little bit of flexion extension. And of course, as the stroke length varies, the amount of flexion and extension you're gonna to begin to get in the wrist will vary. So it isn't about zero degrees of freedom, it's about managing these degrees of freedom and understanding how to hold the putter for you to achieve the best possible results for you. Now, of course, when it comes to putting, these are just my recommendations and suggestions. There are multiple different ways to hold this thing. You've only got to look on all of the professional tours to see golfers doing their putting stroke and their grip in, in multiple ways and having a lot of success. So I'm not trying to suggest for a second that this is the only way you should be doing it. But what I would say is that unless you're measuring what you're doing, you're really just guessing and it's a long, game of trial and error. So take a look at what's really going on at a wrist level, also measuring what the putter's doing throughout the time and space of the swing. A good instructor is going to be able to piece all that knowledge together like a puzzle and come up with a much better solution for you so that you're not wasting time trying lots of different things to see if they work or not. You can get a much better idea of what's going on if you're able to measure. So one final time just to run through that drill, the way I like to do it would be to hold the putter at sort of uh, stomach height, belly button height really here. Elbows flexed and against my side, forearms and shaft parallel to the ground. I'm gonna bend forwards till I reach the ground, keeping my elbows flexed like so. Okay, now I'm nicely positioned over the ball, keeping my 
T-Rex, nice short T-Rex arms, keeping my fingers pointing down to the ground. A nice little extension of this drill if you want to try it, which is a little bit harder than it, than it looks, but it's actually a really good way to train your stroke is to place your uh, palms directly facing each other like this. I call this the prayer grip. Okay, so you're going to push your palms together on the side of the grip. You're not going to join the fingers at all at the back. You're just going to keep them separate. And in this uh, condition, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to hold the putter. Okay, the putter is going to want to um, move around, but it's a nice way for you to feel how the wrists need to stay very stable and strong to move this putter. Now, if I start trying to get the motion from my wrist, this thing's gonna wobble all over the place. Okay, so it's important I have a good solid hold at the side of the grip, keep my fingers pointing down, keep my elbows flexed and in against my side, and now I'm really gonna move this putter and drive the movement here from my torso. I'm gonna move my body in order to hit this putt. Pretty good, that was a nice one. So again, just a nice way to add an advanced level to that drill. Go through the setup procedure, elbows flexed, wrists up, but instead of holding the putter or gripping it tightly, just place your hands in the prayer grip side to side and just try moving the putter. This is also just a great little practice swing drill to do if you don't even want to hit the ball, just to begin with, just training yourself and how to move your body, your arms, your wrist, and the putter in much more of a unit that should lead to better results. Guys, thanks for watching today's video. I hope you found it enjoyable, useful, and a practical takeaway might be to ensure that when you do take a putting lesson, you're seeing somebody who's using technology so that we can truly measure what's going on both at the level of the putter and of the arms and the wrists because what's going on in a putting stroke is sometimes impossible to see with the naked eye. So without good measurements, we're really just guessing. So if you wanna make some genuine improvements to your stroke, start by taking a lesson with someone who's able to measure what you're actually doing. As always, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on what you thought of the video, what you're doing with your own putting stroke, maybe some grip modifications that you've used over time that have actually helped improve your putting. What are you doing when you putt to make sure you have this under a little bit more control and ultimately can produce more consistent outcomes. There's no absolute right or wrong way to do this. I said this in the video. There are so many different versions of uh, functional putting strokes that it actually, you know, it's a minefield really when you think about it, or you, what you could possibly do. So I'd be really keen to hear things that you've found useful in terms of helping you to pr produce a more repeatable stroke. Let me know, get down in those comments and I'll be happy to hear from you. Guys, that's it from me today. Before I leave you, I just want to let you know that for those of you interested in getting your hands on a hack motion wrist sensor, I know they have an offer running this week for Black Friday. I'm not quite sure of the details, but I'll put the link to the website in the description below and you can go and check it out. It's clearly this type of technology is for someone more into measuring at a more uh, higher level of detail. I appreciate this certainly wouldn't be for everybody. But you can use hack motion for more than just putting. I use it in my lessons here for full swing. I've done previous uh, videos on hack motion and how the wrists work in some full swing and there'll be more of that to come soon. So if you wanna check out those videos, I'll also pop those down in the description. You can take a look at those. Until next week, guys, have a great week. Happy Thanksgiving to all of my American followers. Hope you have a wonderful week and I look forward to seeing you next week for another video.